it going everybody flash jordan here we are back for the 2018 season and here we are doing our third annual big 10 season predictions here at the beautiful lake of the ozarks as you can see behind me now let's just get right into the predictions here starting with the west division you know i think this is the easiest division to predict you think differently obviously being a northwestern fan but i do think wisconsin is going to take it and going from seven to one i have illinois at the bottom you know, Lovey Smith, I, he's probably going to get canned after this year. It wouldn't surprise me at all. At number six, I am going to go um, Minnesota again. You know, P.J. Fleck in his second year, I think they may do a little bit better, but not a ton better. Um, give it a couple years, Minnesota will be vying for that top spot in the Western Division. Mm. Bold, bold, prediction. Bold, prediction. bold prediction. Number five, I have got Iowa. Now, Iowa and the FPI here above behind us, that's a plane. It's a it, it is a boat. Um, I got Iowa at five. Now, the FPI has them pretty high. They actually have them top 25. I disagree with that highly. They lose a lot from last year. Um, they, they probably still make a bowl game, but I have them at number five in the West. And number four, I have Nebraska. Um, Scott Frost in his first year, former Nebraska player. He's going to come back. He's going to get him to a bowl game in his first year at Nebraska. And then for my top three, I have Purdue at three, Northwestern at two, Wisconsin at one. I think Purdue and Northwestern are going to um, compete for that second spot all year, but I don't think anyone's going to catch Wisconsin, despite Wisconsin having the tough schedule. So basically, you're saying it's a repeat of last year. Repeat of, basically a repeat of last West year. Division. Yeah. I have similar uh, feelings about the upcoming year. Um, pretty much the same as you except I don't think Purdue's going to be good I really don't and I, I think that uh, they're going to be the slouch team one of the slouch teams they're in the bottom four you're going to see uh, from the top down you're going to see top three will be a mix between Nebraska Northwestern and Wisconsin and it could be any one of those three tied for number one in the West Division um I don't think that coaches that were not Power Five Conference do well when they transfer over. Uh, possibly Scott Fry. Anytime an alumni comes and coaches, there's a lot of hype behind it, but they have to prove themselves. And right. uh, if you look at Harbaugh and Fitzgerald, now Frost and a couple other coaches, they they don't do do that well. Right. And we're going to move on to the East now. The East probably the more competitive division. We could all agree on that. And starting at the bottom, we'll say more popular. Well, but okay. yeah, that's that's probably true too. <laughs> now this is very split division. You have top four who can compete for their, probably they all can compete for the championship in this division, and then you have the bottom three. At at seven, I'm going to go with Rutgers. I just don't, you know, I don't see any improvement from them. And Indiana and Maryland, I feel like one of these teams could surprise us this year. I think Maryland more than Indiana, so that's why I'm going to put Indiana at six. Maryland at five Slam. and then this is really tough actually it's not really tough for, for me at least because I hate that team up north because I'm an Ohio State fan so I'm gonna put them at four I, but I'd probably put them there anyway even if I wasn't an Ohio State fan I just don't see them I feel like it's gonna be a lot like last year I just don't see them getting any better um, you know in this division now they could again they could surprise us they do have a lot of talent they recruit very well but I have them at number four I have Penn State at number three um, I think they're going to take a little bit of a drop off from last year, maybe about 93 um, this year. You know, they lost a lot on the defensive end. Um, they do have Trace McSorley, though, so that could get them, get them an extra win. And then at number two, I've got the Spartans of Michigan State. I think they're probably going to beat Penn State again. Wow. And I feel like they're going to be a little bit better this year. They're going to give Ohio State a really tough test when Ohio State goes to East Lansing later this year. Now I've got the Buckeyes, though, at one. I feel like Ohio State will just have that one extra game that Michigan State doesn't, and they will go back to the Big Ten Championship game. I would just really like to see one of the bottom-of-the-barrel trash East teams beat a good team. It just doesn't happen. No. You see the Western Division giving the East their losses, and it's kind of sad. I'd like to see Rutgers place third or fourth this year. <laughs> knock one of those teams out that's really popular. I'd like to see that, too. Uh, Rutgers used podcast. to be a great team. Um, I mean, they used to be good, but... Okay, I got the bottom four the same, top three the same, Ohio State, Michigan State, Penn State. Michigan 
is turning into Texas, University of Texas. Michigan is turning into that team that has high expectations. Kind of, kind of reminds me of a Notre Dame, to be honest kind with of, you. Kind of, yeah. Um, how Michigan gets in there and they get a lot of press, a lot of coverage, and then they'll go like, you know, four and four or yeah. six and, and five, and then the last game they might get seven. But uh, I don't think they're going to be very good this year. So look so at Ohio State, Penn State. So you think Ohio State's going to win the division? I think Penn State's probably Penn State's going to win the division? Yeah. All right. And let's just move on to the week one games as we normally do. We predict the week one games for the Big Ten teams, along with the college pickup <clears> games, which we'll do later, uh, later before, right before week one. New Mexico State at Minnesota, the week first one game. And a half. Well, yeah, week one and a half, technically. There's some games like the 25th, which are not even worth playing. Um, Thursday, August 30th. Two games for the Big Ten, New Mexico State and Minnesota. Minnesota should win this game. You never know, but Minnesota should win this game. Big. Minnesota should win big. Yeah. We're going to skip the next game because it's probably the second biggest game on this schedule. But since it involves one of us, we're going to leave that one to the end. Utah State and Michigan State. Michigan could State be a great game. game. Utah State did have Wisconsin tied at halftime last year, so you never know. But then they got blown out. But then they did get yeah. blown out in the second half. Yeah. So I'm going to take Michigan State big. I mean, I'm taking Michigan State, too. I don't know about big, but I think Michigan State gets a W here. Easy. Speak, now, that team that Utah State had uh, tied at halftime is Wisconsin, and they're hosting Western Kentucky in Week 1. Again, like a lot of these That'd games, a- the Big Ten team should win big. You never know, though. Western Kentucky's been good the past few years. Their coach that led them to go to those good seasons is now at Purdue. So, yeah. um, that being said, I am going to take Wisconsin. Come here. Save here. And then we're going to the Saturday games, Oregon State and Ohio State. Fun fact, Oregon State, according to the FBI, is actually the worst um, Power 5 team. And I think Ohio State's going to win big. For sure. Yeah, big game on ABC. Um, big win. Now the next game, this is a very interesting game. This is probably the hardest for me to predict. Texas and Maryland. Now, Maryland won last year. No one thought Maryland, Maryland was going to win last year, but they did. They won pretty handily, too. So, over Texas. Over Texas at Texas. And this game is technically a neutral site, but it's basically a home game for Maryland. That being said, I am going to take the Longhorns this year. I think they're going to be a little bit more improved last year. I want Maryland to win. I don't think it's going to happen. I think they can. I think they can beat them. I think Texas is slowly becoming a horrible big twin. When, when you say Texas if versus TCU, you say Texas versus TCU. That used to be like. Texas is going to win or it would be a good game. Now it's a blowout by TCU, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm picking Maryland to win yeah. this game. Kent State at Illinois. I mean, you know, Illinois has had a couple close uh, non-power five games. Yeah. I'll be there in a minute. Kent State is a decent team uh, in, you know, in, in regards to if you go to their football program, you, you're going to be a good athlete. But – I don't think they have what it takes to beat Illinois. Yeah. I really don't. Illinois. I got Illinois winning this game. It's unfortunate, but Illinois should win. Yeah, Illinois should win this game. Texas State at <sighs> Rutgers again, bottom of the barrel, Big Ten team. They, they should win this game. Tech, Rutgers should. I feel like Texas Texas State is going to make it really good in like the first quarter. So. Texas State's horrible. They're not even. But it's Rutgers. <laughs> Ru- okay, Rutgers is going to win this game. If they don't, then they need to seriously consider their life decisions. Yeah. They should leave the Big Ten, honestly. Next, we have Northern Illinois and Iowa. Now, if you know Northern Illinois, you know they're a known Big Ten killer. I said the word no a lot in that sentence. Um, known Big Ten killer. Again. Iowa did lose to North Dakota State a couple of years ago. So it's definitely possible, especially from Northern Illinois. But I do think Iowa oh, yeah. is going to win this one, though. Yeah, and you got to think about it, too. Like, uh, teams around Illinois and and you know, Western Indiana, Eastern Iowa, they don't have to travel far. So there really isn't that, you know, there's no lag um, preparation is right up until they leave on the bus. So I got NIU winning this game. Really? Yes. I, I, you know, I was thinking about I picking, wouldn't even consider it. I was enough thinking about picking, yeah, it's really not. I mean, Northern Illinois, again, is, is a Big Ten killer. They were in a Big Six Bowl game not that long ago. That's true. Next, we have Appalachian State and Penn State. Appalachian State did beat Michigan, but. <sighs> 11 years ago. Um, I don't think an upset like that's going to happen uh, this time around. Penn State should win this one big. Penn State should win, yeah, but, you know, first week, it's not a slouch week, even if you're playing a slouch team. Why? Because everyone's equal in 
and App State's going to have that hunger. So they've been in, they've been in the FBS for a couple of years now. They've done okay uh, in their conference, and uh, it'd be good to see them, you know, get better. I don't I don't like having the same four, five, eight teams all the time um, at the top. So it'd be nice to see somebody go down. But I don't think they will. Next we have Indiana at Florida International. This is a very interesting one. Um, I think Indiana needs to win this game to show that, you know, the Big Ten isn't a slouch. I think the Big, Big Ten is obviously the best conference in football, top to bottom, I think. So top to bottom, for sure. I'm yeah. taking Indiana big in this game. Yeah, I got Indiana winning that game as well. Um, no reason why they should lose, none at all. It'd be, pretty, it'd be like Ohio State losing to Virginia Tech a couple years ago. No, it would. no reason why it they would, would lose. But, okay. Um, we'll get into that later. Uh Actually, the biggest game of the week here, Michigan at Notre Dame, coming to you on 6.30 on NBC in South Bend, Indiana. This is a tough one, because I, I want to go Notre Dame, but I feel like if Michigan wins this one, they're going to be scary for the rest of the year. That being said, I do have Notre Dame winning this game. I need I need Notre Dame to win this game for schedule implications down the road for my favorite team. Uh, so I'm going to pick Notre Dame, because like we said before, in order for, for Michigan they need to have some losses. They need to have some losses to finish fourth or fifth. I realize it's not a conference game, but you know it'll be it'll be a, a good you know, show of how they might do in the conference if they can't get past the Notre Dame. They are the Michigan is currently the favorite. I think they, Vegas just released the lines yesterday, so maybe well, maybe we're wrong. I don't know, but I, I got Notre Dame winning that game. Next we have Akron in Nebraska. Nebraska should win that one big. I think Scott Frost is gonna get a win in his opening game at the University of Nebraska. Yeah, should be Nebraska all the way. And the final game of the week, the biggest game of the week for us here at uh, the Jordan and Dad Show, Northwestern at Purdue on a Thursday night. Now, remember last last year's Thursday night game, Ohio mm-hmm. State at Indiana, game day was there. Um, Indiana kept it close for about two and a half quarters, and then Ohio State kind of I was I was really hoping Indiana would, would uh, upset the Apple Park there. And it was. People were in tears the first half. If you're a Buckeye fan, I wasn't. But anyway, um, they did keep it close for about two and a half quarters. Um, this this year's game is also in Indiana, but it's at Purdue. And I think Purdue is going to get the win opening night this year for 2018. The first Big Ten Conference game of the year. You're not really Purdue's going to just because you want. I, I honestly think Purdue's going to. I want Northwestern win because you're a Northwestern fan. Well, but I think Purdue's going to win. Well, you're taking a senior quarterback in Thorson. A sophomore running back who's explosive, the nation's arguably best linebacker, Patty Fisher. And you're saying that they're going to lose. They're not going to lose. And one of the most tenured coaches in all of football now, Fitzgerald. Isn't that something? It's crazy. You're also talking about the team with the third longest FBS win streak. They need to get into double digits. Uh, I, I think that. I think they're going to win this game. I don't know how they're going to win it, but they'll find a way. They'll find a way. Yeah, and it is very possible. Just a quick note here. I think that you guys put Michigan, what, week three or four? Four. Week four. So if you guys can get by Purdue, and four, I think Florida Atlantic plays Oklahoma, and then UCF, I don't know who they play, but if UCF loses, Florida Atlantic loses to Oklahoma, and you guys win the games you're supposed to, which is a hard task for Northwestern the past few years. But – we will if you do that, you will yeah. have the nation's longest win streak. Yeah, we used to start off the season five and zero, four and zero. Now we started off one and three, and then we have to win out. But right, right. And we usually do. So that's it from us for our annual Big Ten preseason predictions. We will be back for Week One. We'll put up put that video up about a week before Week One, just when the pick'em comes out and the and the top twenty five rankings come out. We'll review that. Any last words for people at home? Coming to you live from Lake of the Ozarks. I say, Daddy O out. I right, see you in Week One.